Good thing this isn't my camera because it's covered in grass guts now. Good morning. Side dressing done. Corn spraying done. We've got all of our beans to spray yet, but probably won't start that till maybe towards the end of next week. So it is uh, 2nd of June and it is hay season. See how tall this stuff is. It's really, really good this year. I'm six foot three and it's over my waist, super thick. If we haven't told you guys, we do raise Angus cattle. Oh, probably, I don't really, I'm not involved with it too much, but 40 to 60 head, I think, somewhere in there. My brothers and my dad and my sister-in-law are gone this weekend to a cattle show. So I'm out here doing the first cutting of this grass hay so we can feed the four-legged rascals this winter. So anyway, it's beautiful out. It's like 77 degrees today. Wind's out of the north and it's dry air. It's not humid. So this is perfect hay cutting weather, perfect hay drying weather. So uh, I don't know, probably got to see the, what is there? About 15 acres here, three over there. So I'll do 20, 20, 25 acres a day maybe. Um, today is Thursday. This stuff's really thick. So it's gonna take a few days to dry. Today's Thursday, so we're hoping it's gonna be dry by Saturday evening. Probably not, probably Sunday. Chance of rain Monday. So hopefully we can get it raked and wrapped up either Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, possibly. So what I'm running is, uh, it's called a disc mower for those of you who don't farm or around livestock or hay. Uh, I'll show you when I go up there. There's just small little blades. They're about three inches, four inches long, and they spin super, super fast. Really low to the ground, as you can see. Just leaves a stubble only about three inches tall, and uh, mows it clean off. Lays it over, and so you want the sun and air and wind to dry this stuff. You can't bale this right now, because if you did, it'd just mold because there's too much moisture. So you gotta let it Got to let it air out, and today's a perfect day for that. And then we'll come back in and rake it into windrows, and then we'll bale it. We have a round baler. We don't square bale, so baling hay is somewhat enjoyable when you round bale. Square baling is not fun, because that's all by hand. We just use this little 110 horsepower tractor. We use it actually for mowing, raking, and baling. So it's, it's a pretty handy utility tractor. This is a John Deere disc mower. Yes. It's a John Deere. You definitely want to be underneath here when it's running, that's for sure. Extremely dangerous, but you can see this is just a little disc right here. You see all these spin? They all spin really fast. And here's a little blade right there. You can actually reverse them. It's cutting on this side right now. You can reverse them so it cuts on this side if you want to after they get worn out, but it does a pretty nice job.
month, in the last couple weeks actually. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But he said uh, he's got about 25 acres of hay down. So I'm going out to get that all wrapped up. He's got it in three different spots. But uh, I think 20 acres of it's all one chunk. So, you know, a big majority of it's all there in one spot. All right, so I figured I'd show you guys a little bit how this uh, monitor works that I'm looking at. As you can see, well, maybe. There's two short bars right there. Hey, you can't hardly see it. But anyway, there's two short bars right there that go up and down independently from each other. And basically, that's telling you how evenly you're loading your baler with the windrow. And that's because sometimes these windrows aren't wide enough to go across the whole width of the pickup of this baler. So we have to weave back and forth to evenly load each side of the baler to make sure the bales are even. So that's what that does. And I'm getting ready to kick one out here in a second. So you show you what that does. Um, it will, the baler will automatically start wrapping the bale when it hits a preset um, size of bale that we've got set. And so we got it'll beep at us when we're almost there and it'll beep at us again when we've hit our um, size that we want and we clutch it to stop the tractor, it wraps it by itself and we pull up on the hydraulic lever to lift the gate and it kicks it out. See that, that just beeped at me saying it's almost full kick it out and then set it back down and off we go again. So I'll get ready to show you how this works. Okay. So here we go. 70 inch bale. See wrapping started and when it'll beep at me and it'll say eject whenever it's ready. Right there. So I pull back on the lever and it lifts up the gate on the back. You can't see it, but it'll kick the bale out right there. And we push the hydraulic lever back down. And off we go again. Well, I need to check my wrap. I'm getting to the end of it. And you can tell that by looking here in the bale. When I get to the end, it starts putting a red stripe there in the middle. So we'll pop open the back here. Yeah. There's the roll I'm using. There's my extra roll up there. Okay, so that's all I got left. Not much. It takes 18 foot to go around one bale twice. And we're going around them three and a half times, so I'm not going to risk it. So I'll get this one pulled out and that one put on there. Okay, there's the old roll up there. You got the new roll in. Had to feed it up underneath there. Took me a minute because I had to remember how to do it. But, there we go. But I think I got it. 
So we'll see how it wraps on this next bale. Well, we had a slight breakdown. Decided it'd be easier to take it back to our shop, about 10 minutes away to fix it there. And while dad's getting the part from the local John Deere, and I stopped by the old Casey's. Cause it's hot. Give me a uh, Mountain Dew and a body armor. Well, we're back up and rolling. It was a relatively minor and easy fix. Although it was causing some decent problems. Uh, broke a piece and was snagging the bales and then therefore tearing the bales. And when it was tearing the bales, it was leaving twine in the baler where it wasn't supposed to be. And it was getting wrapped up around a thing. So that took a while to get cut off. But we got it back up and rolling. And I've done 51 bales so far. Probably get 60. And we will be done. Alrighty, well I just finished up. It took a little bit longer than expected because of the small breakdown we had, but hey, what's a good day at work without a breakdown? Got 62 bales, which is a pretty good day. So we will uh, get this back to Dad and Jonathan's house, and I think Dad's gonna hook onto the rake. He probably won't do any raking tonight, but he'll rake and bale some of our own hay tomorrow. So um, hopefully, didn't get the drone out today. Should be able to get it out tomorrow. Dad can run this and Jonathan can run the drone. So hopefully that works out. And like I said earlier, these are this uh, guys that were bailing this forward are the people that we're going to cut the wheat for here in a couple weeks that I said earlier. And they also said they like uh, some of that wheat stubble baled. So that'll be fun. We'll be bailing right behind the combines. Uh, I don't know if we're going to run one or two combines. We shall see, but it'll be hectic running a baler, combine, grain cart, trucks. But hey, it'll be fun. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.